She's been called the bravest woman in Afghanistan. Um, she was raised in the refugee camps of Iran and Pakistan, and as a young woman, she became a teacher in secret girls' schools, hiding from the Taliban. She also helped establish a free medical clinic and orphanage in her impoverished home province of Farah. As uh, Derek mentioned, at a constitutional assembly in Kabul in 2003, when she was only 24, she stood up and denounced her country's powerful NATO-backed warlords and made headlines around the world. And then two years later, oh, she was also kicked out there, and then two years later, she became the youngest person elected to Afghanistan's new parliament. And in 2007, she was kicked out there um, for her persistent criticism of the warlords and drug barons and their cronies. Well, we're thrilled that she's here, and we're not about to kick her out because we support what she does. But as a result of her activism in Afghanistan, she must live underground. She travels with armed bodyguards and sleeps in safe houses. She has survived seven assassination attempts on her life. And in spite of these threats, this amazing woman, also a new mother of a 10-month-old boy, continues to organize and travel the world to speak out against the injustice suffered by the Afghan people, by foreign occupiers and fundamentalist leaders for decades. As was mentioned, tomorrow is the date of the U.S. attack on Afghanistan 12 years ago, initiating 12 years of occupation, the longest so-called war in U.S. history. Although they talk about withdrawal next year, their intention is to continue the U.S. presence indefinitely. We are thrilled to have Malalai Joya with us tonight to speak the truth about what the U.S. in collaboration with the warlords and the corrupt government has done to her country, particularly the women and children, and what the Afghan people and their supporters here need to do about it. Malalai. Today I represent a nation who, after 12 years of the so-called war on terror, still suffers from fascism of fundamentalism and imperialism of the U.S. in NATO occupation. Besides condemning this disgusting war, I want to share the consequences of these sinister years with you, which were only more bloodshed, crimes, women rights, human rights violations, looting of our resource and changing of our country into a mafia state. During these bloody years, the occupation forces and terrorist groups have killed tens of thousands of innocent civilians. Widespread poverty, destitution, and injustice have made life torture for millions of Afghans. It is suffice to say that in the UN Human Development Index, Afghanistan is ranked at 125th position in the top list of most underdeveloped countries. It holds the first position in the corruption in this, as around 20 million people out of estimated 27 million population of Afghanistan are living under the um, poverty line. Under the U.S. and NATO occupation, Afghanistan was changed to the world capital of narcotics, which produces more than 90% of the world opium. I believe opium is even more dangerous than Al-Qaeda in terrorism, as it destroys the life of these innocent Afghans. There is official report that around 2 million Afghans are addicted most of them are women and children. Opium brides, usually girls aged below 16, are married off in exchange of opium if a farmer fails to supply opium to a warlord. And it is also the most dangerous place to be a woman, according to the recent report of UNIFAM. Catastrophic situation of women was very good excuse for U.S. and NATO to occupy our country. Although the Western media 
raise so much outcry about women's rights participation in the political life of Afghanistan, but they are lies. Uh, over 80% of women face some sort of violences, but there is a complete of impunity for the perpetrators of such crimes. Even a woman MP named Nurzia Atmar, who had link with these warlords, who he, she was forced to seek asylum from her abusing husband. Forced marriages, child brides, acid attacks, domestic violences, attack on schoolgirls, etc., are skyrocketing. Recently, 16 year old Shekila was brutally raped by a member of the provincial council in Bamiyan province. And three other parliamentarians partners in this crime in trying to forge the medical report of the rape girl. This is just the tip of the iceberg that I shared with you now, but such issues hardly reach the mainstream media because these misogynist criminals kill, kidnap, or threaten to date any journalist who reports such incidents. The U.S. and its allies killed thousands of innocent people under the name of so-called war on terror or fighting against Taliban. But now, U.S. officials and other Western governments, they officially, publicly, shamelessly, they confess that Taliban are not their enemies. And that's true. As at least this 10 years, I was saying on behalf of my people to justice-loving people around the world that Taliban, warlords, all of these drag laws, terrorists are product of the White House, and they are only the enemies of Afghan people, not their foreign master. And now, under the name of National Peace Reconciliation, going to negotiate with Taliban and bring these terrorists of the Stone Age in power too. Even they opened an office for them in Qatar. I believe that peace can never come to the sworn enemies of peace. The way we witness the rule of these Northern Alliance warlords who are brother and creed of the Taliban. Such kind of so-called peace is more dangerous than the current war. Peace without justice and independence is meaningless, and our people first demand for justice. Justice for the blind suicide bombing of the U.S. occupation forces and barbaric jihadis and Taliban who killed their dear ones. Right now, the U.S. and NATO only want a peace for themselves in the expense of putting our people to more disasters through empowering of these terrorists, drug lords, and looters of Afghanistan. And now, U.S. and NATO tell us that they will leave Afghanistan by mid of 2014. It's also another big lie. The people of the world need to know that U.S. and NATO countries are there because of their own strategic, regional, economic, and political interests. As right now, they are working to create at least nine major military bases in my country to change it into its common base in Asia. Even if they are mobilizing the Afghan army and police, it is just to use them as cannon fodders to decrease the number of their own soldier casualties. And I think itself is enough to show the hypocrisy of the U.S. government. From one hand, they are talking from about the withdrawal of their troops, but from another hand, they are talking about U.S. permanent military bases there. Just a few thousands of troops, they will withdraw to deceive the justice-loving people of the U.S. and around the world. As long as there is U.S. military presence in Afghanistan. We have no independence. In a country which has no independence, talking about democracy, women's rights, human rights, justice is a ridiculous joke. I believe that the only solution for the catastrophic situation of Afghanistan is the withdrawal of all of these troops as soon as possible.
because their presence is making our fight for justice much harder by empowering these reactionary, brutal, and dark-minded forces that are great obstacles for true democratic-minded elements. The show of the so-called election in Afghanistan is another joke with our people, what they portray as democratic election through a corrupt, fabricated, and fraudulent process. Without any doubt, the most disgusting selection ever seen in the human history. Election in an occupied mafia state has no legitimacy at all. I will never be tired to say from every audience to justice-loving people around the world on behalf of my people that no nation can donate liberation to another nation. Liberation should be achieved in a country by the people themselves. And our people can fight the medieval-minded Taliban and their jihadi brothers in creed if they are not supported and armed by foreign masters who shamelessly try to portray themselves as friends of Afghan. And the US government has a long history of replacing democratic regimes with dictators. We have seen in the course of modern history that US government interfered in internal issues of tens of nations to suppress mass movements and block democratic-minded forces from coming to power in the countries where the US has its economic and strategic interests. Iran, Chile, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Bolivia, Laos, Vietnam, Indonesia, these are few of the many countries where US interferes brought bloodshed, suffering, and tragedies to their people. I'm afraid the same will happen again to the countries where people stand against dictators. If the leaders of this movement could not stop the dirty hands that are actively working to divert the people's right to a wrong and dangerous direction. Egypt is a good and new example. Right now we are witnessing the disaster going on in the Syria where the Western powers support and arm fundamentalist groups who are brother in case of Taliban and Al-Qaeda, to which that country was changed into ashes and even darker days are expected for its people. The brave protesters in all third world countries must be aware of these facts and learn from history of these other nations. As we see, imperialism and fundamentalism have joined hands to lead the world toward barbarism. We should fight against it even if it happens in Iran, Syria, Libya, Palestine, or Iraq. Fortunately, day by day, we are witnessing the glorious uprising of the people against warmongers and economic crisis in different parts of the world, especially in the US which shows the huge difference of Af American justice-loving people with their criminal government. I have always said that U.S. has two faces. One is that of a dirty imperialist government, but the other are its great people like my friend Chomsky and many like of you that who are at least right now here and countless other justice-loving American people, and great people like Snowden, Chelsea Manning, Matty Schrutz, Daniel Ellsberg, John Parker, Mike Preisner, Joe Clinton, and hundreds and thousands of other anti-war soldiers who are considered traitors by their government, but are the real heroes for the determining majority and live in the hearts of all oppressed people around the world. I send salutation to Edward Snowden and Manning who are so brave to expose the real criminals in Pentagon and White House in the heart of the US and played a big role in enlightening people around the world about true brutal face of US imperialism. The more such brave people are pressed by 
the U.S. administration, the more they will find their place in the hearts and minds of suffering people all over the world. They are also my heroes and a source of inspiration. I would like to end my talk tonight with the quote of these two heroes. As Manning says, I don't want to be the part of the killing and crime machine of U.S. government. And Snowden says, I cannot in good conscience allow the U.S. government to destroy privacy, internet freedom, and basic liberties for people around the world with this massive surveillance machine they are secretly building. Heartful thanks once again for your solidarity and support.